Hi, yeah, Renee Jones here. It was one of those phone calls. My sister-in-law, my young nephew, arm broken. And she couldn't reach my brother, who was visiting our grandmother way out of cell phone range. This auntie was in the car before we hung up, and on the way, I reached my brother. And later, while my brother and sister-in-law consulted with the doctor, I stayed with the boy to hold and to soothe. And as he nestled his head against my chest, all I could do for him was to keep his arm stable, to hold him and to just speak gently. Did I have any candy with me? Food was my first thought for soothing him. It was my go-to. The urge to soothe by putting something in our mouths comes so early. You've likely seen sonograms that capture a baby sucking his thumb. And after birth, when a baby cries, well, we put something in their mouths, whether it's the bottle, the breast, or a pacifier. And then as we get older, we trade that pacifier for a thumb or our nails, later a donut. And so the habit of soothing ourselves with food is ingrained. In times of stress and sorrow or pain, we bring food. It's natural. It's normal. It's an easy way to soothe. It's just not very helpful when our clothes begin to tighten. And it's not so soothing then, is it? Breaking that impulse or habit is the hard part. It's not like food is our only option, right? There are other soothers. They're just not as easily accessible or convenient. And until we choose to make them more accessible and convenient. See, we can always create new habits, new pathways, new options, but it requires intention and persistence. Few habits are created without effort. We have to keep choosing the better option until we no longer have to think about choosing it. So what truly soothes you? Make a list. Include things that are quick and easy, like a five-minute walk or a quick video game or a YouTube video or calling a friend, listening to a calming, breathing meditation, whatever meets your specific needs. See, we're all different, so it's important to discover what works for you, and then list things that would be deeply soothing. That lovely bubble bath, yoga or Pilates, a run, watching a favorite comedy that makes you belly laugh, or maybe a puzzle or a girl's night out. Again, it's individual. And then put that list on your phone, on a sticky note, where it's easily accessible. It takes time to build a go-to habit, but having a list of options handy makes it easier to make the choice. And if you need a little help creating that list, call me. We can get you where you want to go.